o bore da a chryso cynnas i chi un gwasanaeth o'r dren newydd y bore yma. Good morning and a very warm welcome to you to our worship from Newtown this morning. The welcome is genuine and warm to all who are joining with us for this worship wherever you may be listening from or following us in our worship and time together with the Lord. Let us pray. Father God, thank you for this opportunity to worship together and to be together in fellowship, remembering that where two or three are gathered together, you are among us. And so we welcome you among us this morning as we welcome one another as part of this fellowship. May you bless us during this time of worship and prayer and song and word. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. A very beautiful song to uh, begin this worship time together. Very, very beautiful. One of my favourites and the favourites of many at All Saints Church. To the river I am going. To the river I am going Bringing sins I Cannot bear. Come and cleanse me. Come forgive me. Lord, I need to meet you there. In these waters, healing mercy. Flows with freedom from despair. I am going to that river. Lord, I need to meet you there. Precious Jesus, I am ready. To surrender every care Take my hand now Lead me closer Lord, I need to meet you there To the Calling, he is waiting. 
Jesus longs to meet you there. Precious Jesus, I am ready to surrender every care. Take my hand now, lead me closer. Lord, I need to meet you there. Take my hand now, lead me closer. Lord, I need to meet you there. I'll probably hear those words and the music humming in my head throughout this day, such is the power of music and words. Reading for, for us today is Colin Rowe, who worships with us at All Saints Church. Today's reading is taken from Matthew chapter 16. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say the Son of Man is? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But what about you? He asked, who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he ordered his disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. This is the word of the Lord. Well, dear Colin, thank you. Who do you say Jesus is? It's one of the most challenging and important Christians in the Gospels. Knowing that his time with his disciples will be coming to an end soon, Jesus is now testing their understanding of his nature. He asks them, who are the people saying that the Son of Man is? The disciples offer him four answers. Some think of Jesus as John the Baptist. Some think of him as the prophet Elijah. Some think of him as the prophet Jeremiah and others think of him as one of the other prophets. Each of these makes sense in some way but each of these popular understandings fail to discern the depth and fullness of Jesus's identity. The people look at Jesus but they only see the reflection of religious ideas from their past. They have a really hard time imagining that God could be doing something different or new. The true identity of Jesus is at the very heart of the gospel message and, of course, of the Christian movement. Jesus has been described as a great teacher of wisdom, a social reformer, a champion of individual freedom and worth, a revolutionary. There are grains of truth in all these descriptions, but as one theologian commented, all these tend to force a peg labelled Jesus into a hole drilled to fit into people's own religious preconceptions. 
When Jesus asks the disciples, who do you say I am? They named some of the customary, incomplete and mistaken understandings of who Jesus is. Then Peter blurts out something that is completely new and revolutionary. You are the Messiah, the Son of the Living God. Now something in the way that Peter says those words, or some uncertainty in the disciples' voices, causes Jesus to recognise that they had pronounced the truth without actually comprehending it. So Jesus tells the disciples to be quiet and not to tell anyone that he is the Messiah. But if they cannot tell anyone, how can they proceed to build the church? On this rock, I will build my church, Jesus says to Peter. Peter, with the help of the other disciples, is to build the church by the life they live, a life of love for God and for neighbour, a life of service, and a life in pursuit of justice and peace. The disciples' lives will speak louder, more truthfully, and more effectively than their words ever can. And so I ask this morning, who do you say Jesus is? Who do we say Jesus is? What do our lives say about who we believe Jesus is? Every day, our faith calls us to live in the midst of these questions. We live in the tension between the prevailing and popular pronouncements we hear and our daily confessions of who we know Jesus to be through our study of scriptures and prayer and living in a community that encourages and challenges us. When people claiming to be Christian support unjust practices and policies, who are they saying Jesus is? When people say, we are a Christian nation, but fail to care for those who are hungry, or homeless, or oppressed, who are we saying Jesus is? When Jesus asks his disciples, who do you say I am? Peter comes forward and speaks up, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God this being revealed to him by God. Does Jesus say he will build his church on Peter because he got the right answer? Or because he spoke up? Or because this truth was revealed to him by God? Or because he knows that Peter, although he will stumble and falter again and again, will eventually become a devout and courageous follower of Jesus and an encourager for others. Who do we say Jesus is? Who do I say Jesus is? I believe that Jesus is the Son of the living God, the God of love and compassion and justice. I believe Jesus came to live among us, full of grace and truth, because Jesus is God's way of showing us how much God loves us and all people. Jesus reveals to us a living and loving God, who cries for the victims of war, crime, violence and injustice. A God who cares for those in the path 
of the storm of coronavirus and other diseases and sufferings. A God who hurts for and with those who are the victims of violence or racial or ethnic prejudice. I believe Jesus also came to show us what is possible and to encourage us to dare do things differently. Jesus didn't give in to disease. He healed people. Jesus didn't abandon people to their demons. He showed them compassion. Jesus didn't let people go hungry because there wasn't enough food to go around. He fed them. Jesus didn't give in to the temptation of becoming popular and well-liked. He challenged the authorities and became unpopular and despised by them. Jesus refused to be limited by the status quo and invites us to do the same. In the resurrection, Jesus shows us that goodness is stronger than evil and love is stronger than hate or fear or even death. In his life and in his teachings, Jesus shows us that God's love conquers. There is so much going on in the world right now, in our nation and in our communities, that needs our prayers, our efforts, our work and our commitment. The living God calls us in our individual lives and in our life as the church to confess Christ, the suffering Christ, who always sides with the vulnerable, to confess him in word and in action. With our lives, with our relationships, with our finances and possessions, with our time, with our energy, with our talents, we are called to proclaim who we say Jesus is. And so, in light of Jesus' actions and teachings, how will our lives be different? When the church reaches out to share the good news of God's love to someone who is alienated from God, when we teach the faith to a child, when we care for someone in need, when we offer hospitality to a stranger, when we stand in solidarity with those who are marginalised and oppressed, or when we stand up for justice, we then are living into God's future, the kingdom of heaven here and now. When we do this, we are participating in the very life of God. Who do you say I am? asks Jesus. May God open our heart to recognise who Jesus is today. And may we answer with confidence, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And may all whom we encounter along life's journey recognise us as children of God by the way we speak and the way we act. May we mirror the example of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We follow those words with the very beautiful and popular hymn, The Church is One Foundation is Jesus Christ our Lord.
that I share with you this morning and I apologise if this is the first time you hear of this sad news if you haven't heard already but sadly Leslie Newman who is a devoted member of the Church of Llanmerewig passed away uh, peacefully at her home we pray for her soul now in heaven and pray especially for her partner Gwyn who will be devastated and very sad and heartbroken, I know. Prayers for you, Gwyn, and for all of you in the community of Llanmerewig. Pray and give thanks as we continue praying for the soul of Dorothy Skibner and giving thanks to all those of you in Llanmerewig who helped to make the funeral arrangements what they were. She had a beautiful service at Llanmerewig Churchyard and thereafter at the uh, crematorium in Aberystwyth. Uh, huge thanks to Leanne and the undertakers for looking after us so well. Thank you to Jeanette and to Jill, Jeanette the parish priest of Llanmerewig and Jill the warden. Thank you also to Professor David Ford for his beautiful tributes and to John and Helen for taking part in the service. And our prayers are very much with Brian and with Rob and Joanna as they come to terms with the sad loss of Dorothy. Also pray for the soul of Keith George and pray for his daughter Debbie 
and all members of the family in their sadness and in their loss. And continue to pray for the soul of Betty Griffiths, for Jen, Bethan and Shan. And I wish to thank you as a family for your kind donations to the church. I'd like to say thank you to the Rotary for a gift of £200 which I received on Friday towards the uh, Sunday lunches that continue to be served every Sunday. We continue every Sunday until the first week of September and then we serve the, the lunches every other week. I'm also compiling a list of people who would wish to worship at All Saints Church, whichever church you may be a member of or none. I need to get compile a list to make sure that we uh, can accommodate all who wish to attend worship. There may be two sittings, if not three, of a Sunday morning, and so the wardens or myself will be asking you which service you would like to uh, join, and if there are any people um, following this service and they would wish to attend service, a service of worship on a Sunday morning, please do let me know so that we know of you in order to include us on the list. We continue to pray for those who are ill, praying for Carlos who's had a really tough time of, of it recently. He has been in hospital, he is going through a very difficult and a very intense regi regime of chemotherapy and so our prayers for little Carlos, for his sister Grace, for Mummy and Daddy Juan and Debbie, know that you're in our prayers. And also pray for Evie and for her mother and father and for brother Finn as she continues to make progress. Pray for healing for both of you Evie and Carlos. Pray for Nolene as she continues to receive treatment and pray today for Jane and for Rob. Jane was married at All Saints Church on Christmas Day of this last year and sadly she has been diagnosed with a very serious and severe cancer and has started chemotherapy as from Thursday. Jane, know that you are very much in my prayers and in the prayers of All Saints Church members and also you Rob. Prayers for strength and courage and healing. And to continue with our press this morning, Kath Wigley, who is training to be a reader in the mission area. Gathered as the Church of God, members of the Body of Christ, we call us into relationship with each other. Let us pray together. Fill your church, O Lord, with life and energy spiritual health and vitality. We pray for your worldwide church, for millions of Christians in thousands of places, following you in myriad different ways. Help those whose faith is costly and those who try to express your hope in the face of hardship. Give us all a life together rooted in wisdom and faith that we might not only speak of your love, but share it with others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Fill your world, O Lord, with wonder at creation, recognition of our mutual human responsibility, desire for reforming what is at fault, and hope in the possibilities of living at peace with God and with one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Fill our homes and neighbourhoods, O Lord, with the generosity and trust that allow space but is always ready to encourage and support. May we cherish our bodies, minds and spirits and honour one another as people of your making. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are ill at home or in hospital, for all in emergency surgery, or in casualty, for those who have just discovered that they have injuries or illnesses that will change their lives. And we pray for all those sufferers of whom we think and whom we name in the silence of our hearts.
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the dying and those who love them. We pray for those who have completed this life and have made the journey through death. We pray for the work of those who comfort the bereaved. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you, O Lord, for the church. Help it to be solid as a rock. Help us to be willing to be changed for you. Help us to use all that we have and all that we are to make your world as you want it to be. Help us to dream dreams and truly to believe that things can be better for everyone. Let us pray with confidence to the Father as we say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Dear Father, Kath, thank you. Well, this brings us to the end of our time of worship together. Pray that it has been a time of knowing God's closeness and grace within you. Pray that the words, the songs, the prayers will encourage you as you begin a new week of mission and ministry as Christians in your community. Let us keep those people whom we have prayed for today in our prayers throughout this coming week, for they need our prayers and support. And I invite you now to join with me in prayer. Father God, thank you for all that we have shared. Thank you for being, being our stronghold. Thank you for being our protector. Thank you for being present in our lives and encouraging us. Father God, we ask you now to fill us with your peace, with your encouragement, that you may protect us throughout this week. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you this day and always. Amen.